When making games or software in general, it's very important to keep backups of your code and assets. This process is what we call version control. The biggest benefit of using version control is that it allows you to collaborate with others and work on the same project and in some cases even the same exact file at the same time. But even when working alone, there are many benefits to version control, such as being able to upload your project to GitHub or GitLab and access it from different computers, and being able to roll your project back to a previous state in case something breaks. There are a few different version control solutions such as Perforce, Plastic SCM and of course Git. While the first two are made with game development in mind and might be good for big companies, Git is a lot more accessible and much more commonly used which is why I'll focus on Git in this video and show you my workflow I've been using for the past 4 years with Unreal Engine. You'll first have to head over to the Git website and download the installer for your operating system. Then start the installer and go through all of the steps. In most cases the default setting should be fine. Once the installation is complete you can look for Git bash on your system. This is a new command line that was installed together with Git that allows you to use Linux style commands and is a lot easier to use than the terminal that comes with Windows. To check if Git is properly installed you can type in git dash dash version. You could use Git with Unreal just through the command line but it's a lot easier with a graphical user interface. So let's download GitHub Desktop next. Go through the installation steps. Once you've installed GitHub Desktop, you'll then be asked to sign into your GitHub account or create a new one. So please proceed doing that and log in. The next step is to create an Unreal Engine project to be used with version control. I'll start with the third person template for demonstration purposes. Now we need to create a Git repository and connect it with this Unreal Engine project. Open up GitHub Desktop. In case you don't have any repositories yet, this screen might look slightly different for you. In that case, click on add an existing repository from your hard drive. If you have the same view as me, click on File and Add Local Repository. Now you need to navigate to where your Unreal Engine project is located. If you don't know the location, you can go to the Epic Games Launcher Library, right click on your project and show in folder. You can then copy the path here and paste it to locate this for GitHub Desktop. It will then tell you that there's no git repository in this folder, so click on create a repository. Here you can set the name and description. Another thing that's very important is git ignore, which I'll explain in detail in the next step. Now just make sure to select Unreal Engine here and click on create repository. This might take a few minutes, but after it's done you should see your repository in GitHub Desktop. If you click on history, you can see all the project files that have been committed to Git with the initial commit. These are mostly things from the content folder of a project such as the map, mannequin and some blueprints. The git ignore file will specify which file extensions and folders we don't want to commit to the version control system. And since we selected Unreal Engine, this is already filled out for us. Unreal Engine will create a lot of temporary files which it needs to work, however there is no need for us to share these with other members or upload them to the cloud, since they would only use up space and slow things down. I'm mostly talking about the built, intermediate and saved folder here. For my DK Bongo platform project it's only about 2GB, but I've had other projects where this added up to 20 plus gigabytes, so it's really important to set up your git ignore file correctly. Another thing we need to talk about is git lfs. Git is mostly targeted at versioning code, but it's not great with binary files such as textures, 3D models and many other asset types you'll need in your games. You can technically still commit these to Git, however uploads and downloads will be very slow. So with Git large file storage we can split what files are being saved where to get the best performance. We actually already installed Git LFS support together with Git and Git Bash, so there's no need for us to download and install this. However we do need to update our project and the Git attributes file. The way I usually go about this is to go into the content folder of my project and create one folder called static for things such as sound files, textures, models and so on and another folder called dynamic for blueprints, maps and other things that will frequently be updated. We then need to split the files that are already in the project between these two folders. Level prototyping has a lot of static meshes and materials so it belongs in static. Even though the files have moved the folder might still be displayed here. You can right click on the content folder and fix up redirectors. Then we can just delete the folder. The third person folder has blueprints, maps and input bindings, so we can move it into dynamic.
Then again, fix up redirectors and delete the folder. The characters folder has a lot of animations and meshes, so move it into static. You can now right click on your current repository and show in Explorer. Open up the git attributes file in a text editor of your choice. Here you now have to add this line which I'll also add in the video description for you to copy. Content slash static slash asterisk asterisk filter equals lfs diff equals lfs merge equals lfs dash text. This basically says that everything under the content static folder should be handled by lfs. Now open up github desktop and you should see the changes to the git attributes file. If you select any of the assets that are inside the static folder, you should then also see something here on the right side mentioning something about version git lfs. That's how you know you set it up correctly. Now we can do our first manual commit and save the changes we just applied. To do that we need to add a commit message. Now there are many guides and conventions for how to write good commit messages, but to keep it simple, you want to concisely describe what you implemented, it should be written in present tense and using imperative mood. Then click on commit to main. When you click on history you can see our commit history. You can think of a commit as a checkpoint or snapshot of your project at a certain time. You can always go back to a snapshot later when you notice that there are issues. So it's a good practice to commit frequently and only commit things that are related to one topic or task together. Let's now make some changes to simulate a mistake. When implementing something in Unreal Engine you often won't know the perfect way of doing it right away. And you'll have to try a bunch of different things out to see if they work. Sometimes these changes will cover multiple blueprints or C++ files and reverting them back manually will take a lot of time or might even be impossible. I'm just gonna go into this map and delete a bunch of things to break the game. When you open up GitHub Desktop you can see that it detected changes to the map. In Unreal Engine 4 you'd only see a single map file here. However with UE5 they changed it to a one file per actor system. So you'll see an entry for each actor we deleted here. Discarding the changes we made is the easiest while we still haven't made any commits. Before we do that though we need to shut down the Unreal Engine project since we can't have it access the files while making changes. It's fine to keep Unreal Engine open when we make commits or pushes, but not when we do discards, rollbacks, pulls or branch changes. Always shut down the project when you do something of that nature or things can easily break. Once the project is shut down we can simply right click here and discard all changes. Now when you open up the project again we need to open up our map from the folder since it was unset as a default map when we moved it around. Now you can see that we're back to the state before we deleted parts of the level. And this of course also works for blueprints, C++, materials and everything else. This is something I use all the time and probably the biggest reason you should use version control even when working on a project alone. Even once you have committed something you can right click your commit in your history and undo commit or revert changes in commit to roll these changes back. However when doing this you need to be a bit more careful since this could cause conflicts with files you've changed since then. Let's now upload our changes to github. Click on the publish repository button and make sure that github.com is selected. Also make sure that keep your code private is checked. Otherwise anybody on github can just see and download your project files. Then click on publish repository. In your case this should work out just fine and your project should then be uploaded to the github cloud. You can then just right click your project name and open on github to confirm this. In my case however I already used up my git lfs data limit on github and can therefore not upload my project. This brings us to the next topic, github versus gitlab. Github limits your git lfs storage to 1 GB and that is not per project but for your account overall. If you want to use more you'll have to start paying for a data plan which starts at about $5 per month. Gitlab on the other hand allows free repositories of up to 10 GB and doesn't limit lfs storage on your account overall. However I just saw that they took away the ability to have teams of more than 5 members for the free tier, which might be an issue for your project. Also the maximum repository size is 10 GB altogether. So what I usually do is start on GitLab and use it until I hit 10 GB on a project and then switch back to GitHub and start paying for the data plan. However if you have a team of 5 or more members you might just want to stay on GitHub and start paying once you hit more than 1 GB. One thing you could try is to not use GitLFS and just upload all your binary files as is to GitHub.
Even though uploads and downloads will be a lot slower like this, it won't count towards your data limit and you can do this for free. In that case, you don't have to do the steps of splitting the assets between static and dynamic and don't have to add the extra line on the git attributes file. I'll still show an example of how GitLab works though and after that we'll also talk about pulling changes your teammates committed and what you need to be careful of with merge conflicts regardless of if you're using GitHub or GitLab. The signup process and many things about GitLab have changed since I started using it, but you can log in using your Google or GitHub account. It says 30 days trial here, but I believe you can still keep on using it after that. At least for basic features such as the kind of repositories we want to make. I've been using it for years for these kind of repositories and can still access all of them without any issues. Once you're logged in, make sure that you're on the project tab in your dashboard. Then click on new project. Create blank project. Type in a project name. Make sure that the visibility level is set to private. It's also important that initialize repository with a readme is checked, since it's a lot easier to set up a repository that isn't empty. Click on create project. On the project page, we can then click on clone and copy the HTTPS link by clicking this button. Then open up GitHub Desktop, click on file and clone repository. Here go to the URL tab and paste the link. Click on clone. This will now download the project which only contains a readme file to your computer. Now open up the folder where our Unreal Engine project is located and select everything except for the .git folder. You can then either copy these files or cut them out. Open the folder for a GitLab repository and paste these files in. When we open up GitHub Desktop now, on the GitLab project we should see all the files we added, including the git attributes and git ignore. Remember, these files will specify what we want to ignore and what we want to upload to git lfs. So all of these settings will carry over to GitLab by just copying these two files. Type in a commit message and commit to main. Then click on push to origin. This could take quite a while depending on how big your project is and how good your internet connection is. Once this is done, if you go back to your GitLab page and refresh it, you should be able to see all the changes on here. Every time before you work on a project again or before you commit any changes, you should always check if any of your team members made changes. To check this, you can click on Fetch Origin. This will then show you the amount of changes that are committed to the cloud but are not on your machine. Before you click on Pull Origin, it's very important that you close down Unreal Engine or things will start bugging out. You can actually also have active changes on your slate when pulling, however only if the files you're working on have not been altered in the new commits. When you open up your project again, all the changes you pulled should be applied and you can keep working. By the way, you can of course also commit C++ code with the setup we have and they will be correctly uploaded to the regular GitHub or GitLab and not to the Git LFS cloud storage. One more thing I need to talk about are mergers and merge conflicts. When working with C++ code, unless two people change the same part of the code, you will be able to merge the code and keep the changes which both members made. Just to demonstrate, I'm using the GitLab online IDE to simulate two members changing the files. If they both change the same line, then you can try to resolve the merge conflict and decide which changes should stay and which changes should go away. You can pick if you want to keep the current changes, incoming changes or both. However, since blueprints, materials and many other Unreal Engine files are handled as binary data, you cannot merge them under any circumstances. And one member will have their progress overridden, which then might cause dependency issues with other blueprints or files. So you need to decide on a system with your team that makes sure that only one person changes a certain blueprint at any given point in time. And this is the most challenging part of version control with Unreal Engine. In smaller teams you could just have a group chat where every member would say which files they are working on and also notify everybody once they're finished. And this will probably suffice for most people watching this video. But if you're working in a big team and just communicating in a group chat didn't work out, you might want to look into git file locking. 
There is a system that allows you to lock files so only one user can edit them at a time, which sounds like the perfect solution for blueprints and materials. However, that is out of scope for this video and you can do your own research on this topic in case it's necessary for your project. Thanks for watching till the end and I hope this will help you manage your projects better. Also thanks to my patrons for enabling me to make content like this.